You're listening to Fight Society with Damon Martin and Jeremy Loeber. Check it out. Welcome back to Fight Society. Post the biggest fight ever. Would you say that? You think it's the biggest fight ever? Uh, in terms of pay-per-view and attention, yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's got to be. It's got to be, right? Everyone was buzzing. I, I didn't go... Anywhere or see anything that wasn't about Mayweather McGregor last week. No, it's it's really difficult. And if somebody asked me one more time what I thought of the fight, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> it's, it's, it's everywhere, man. It is everywhere. But you know what? I mean, we are here to talk about it. And the reason I didn't really want to answer a lot of people is because I wait to give... Uh, to give the goods here to the people that tune in weekly to this show. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk a lot of Mayweather McGregor. We're going to talk to... Uh, Former UFC title contender Kenny Florian and coach Angelo Reyes, and they're going to break down some of the uh, madness that happened with Mayweather McGregor. Actually, one of the things that we're going to talk about with Angelo, he explains why Floyd was wearing the ski mask on uh, Saturday Oh, really? Night. Yeah, he explains that story. So. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. That's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah, he actually told me the story behind that. Because he was with Floyd in the last like days of his camp and stuff, so... He knew the story behind that. I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." So I never didn't 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 see that one coming. So so there's been tons of stuff that, that that's happened. You know, obviously uh, the fight itself I think surprised a lot of people. You know, the 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 copy box numbers were through the roof for Connor, uh, landing more shots than Manny Pacquiao did in 12 rounds, which yeah. is which is impressive. Crazy when you think about it. it. Nuts when you think about it. So, so what did you think about the stoppage? Did you think it was early? Did you nah, think it was appropriate? I thought it was appropriate. Connor was clearly exhausted. He wasn't fighting back, and he was just eating punches. I mean, he wasn't going down. But, you know, that's the thing with boxing that you have to be careful with, and that's why there's so much brain damage in boxing is because you take a lot more shots. I you let me go out of my shield. <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, I, I'm i okay with the stoppage because in, in, in more oftentimes than not in boxing, that's how the fights are stopped. You know what right. I mean? Like you will occasionally see a guy get absolutely floored like Mike Tyson used to do to people when he would knock them you know, into the middle of next week. But that's rarer in boxing, especially at the lighter weights. Than it is, you know, in MMA where, you know, you see guys get absolutely slept with one punch and it's over. You know, it's accumulation of shots that gets you in boxing typically. And so I was fine with the stoppage. He was exhausted. He wasn't fighting back. You know, he was just eating a lot of punches. And, uh, and you know, I was fine with the stoppage. I didn't, I didn't think it was, like, egregious or anything. What about, what did what, you think about, like, the style, man? I mean, I'll tell you what I thought is right from the beginning, man, I thought that the style that Conor McGregor brought was exactly what he was going to bring. That long karate stance, it was kind of cool to see. <clears throat> As myself, uh, being from a karate background, you always wonder, how does that translate into a, a in, in the boxing ring, in that arena alone? You know, because uh, people want to say he wasn't a high-level striker. Well, I got news for you, man. That's that's false. And I think we saw that. Of course, in the first few rounds, Floyd is downloading that information like we talked about over and over and over. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, he feels everybody out. But like it or not, he ate a huge uppercut. He did. And some other big lefts. I mean, there was a point where I remember turning to you during the fight, and I'm thinking, like, man, is he going to let Floyd get some in? Yeah, he was landing a couple. He had a couple stiff jabs that snapped Mayweather's head back. Because I remember we were sitting there watching the fight, and I think the entire room, there was, you know, what, 30 people in there. Uh, everyone, when he was snapping his head back, everyone was like, ooh, because like, it was kind of surprising. You're just not used to Floyd really getting hit much, and he got hit. My buddy Tom from Westside Barbell is from Kilkenny, Ireland. He was there and knows a lot of people that knows Connor. And, I mean, you know, it's it was a crazy thing to watch. He said, he goes, man, the whole country of Ireland is going to go bankrupt <laughs> if this goes south. And, and you just, you got to wonder uh, – I didn't see any video, but like, what was the aftermath like after the fight? Like, what did you hear? Uh, I mean, as far I, as the, the fans go, I mean, everyone was proud of what Connor did. He went out there and fought, and he put on a good show. He won. Th well, you know, the judges in boxing were terrible. What is that? That's that was some hot garbage. That, hot garbage. I thought Dude. Connor. I scored Connor winning four four rounds out of the nine. But I could see it being six three. There was one round that was really close. I think it was round eight that was really close. And I said, you know, I could see it being 6-3 six, three, six, three Mayweather, but I had it 5-4. How you only give one round to, to Conor McGregor in the first round, two of the judges, is ridiculous. 
that was just awful scoring. Not only because Connor was winning the rounds, but in the first three rounds, Floyd didn't do anything. He was throwing like five punches around. How yeah. do you win a round? In the first round, what he he threw one punch, right? Yeah, like how do you win a round if you're throwing five punches? I mean, that's just common sense. That's not even like that's not even like me being a mixed martial arts homer. Like that's not even that. It's just the fact that like if you throw five punches in a round and your opponent throws a lot more and lands a lot more, <laughs> that's pretty much science right there as to why he wins the round. But I had I had Connor winning five four of the five four of the nine rounds that they fought all the way through. And I said three to six I was fine with two. Um Connor has nothing to be ashamed of with that performance. I, you know, if I had to criticize Connor's performance, I would say I think in the early going, he went out there and tried to box Mayweather a little bit too much. You know, he wasn't throwing a lot of power behind his punches. He was kind of, you know, kind of, I feel like Connor was setting himself up in case he had to go 12 rounds. So he didn't want to overexert himself too much in those early rounds because he went after him. But if you notice, he didn't really cock back that left hand and really unleash it a lot in that first round. First no, and he's rounds. taking all kinds of heat for it too. Oh, he doesn't have the punching power he said he had. No, I think oh, he was conserving his energy and it backfired anyways. But I think that was my only criticism of him. I thought he should have gone out there and turned in a bit of a more of a slugfest in the first couple of rounds because that's when he was at his freshest. But Connor has nothing to be ashamed of. He went nearly 10 rounds with one of the greatest boxers of all time. And credit to Floyd Mayweather for sticking out and saying what he doing what he said he was going to do when he said he was going to step forward. He was going to go for the knockout. Because guess what? Floyd Mayweather, for all his faults, for all these really defensive masterminded fights that were boring as shit. I mean, you look at a lot of those <laughs> fights, they were boring. Um, Floyd could have Floyd could have fought that way against a lot of other guys. He could have fought that way against Andre Berto and won. He could have fought that way against a lot of guys, probably not against you know, Canelo Alvarez or probably Manny Pacquiao because they're such offensive fighters. So you have to play a little bit more defense, but he could have fought that style that he did against Connor against a lot of guys in one. He just took less risk because he didn't want to lose. And I understand that I'm not faulting him for that. Like he took less damage. He still won the fights. Most of them were blowouts, uh, but he didn't want to, he didn't want to put himself in a position where he would get hit. He put himself in a position to get hit and Connor hit him. And, and then Floyd stuck to his gun, stepped forward, and knocked him out. I mean, it was everything that we could have wanted in that fight outside of, if you're a Connor supporter, knocking out Floyd Mayweather, which would have obviously been a huge moment. Outside of that, the fight played out better than anyone would have expected. It wasn't a lopsided fight. It wasn't like Connor didn't show up. It wasn't a boring fight because Floyd didn't step back and just do his shoulder roll and just play defense. It was a fun and enjoyable fight. And we have some uh, professional breakdown. Let's get to our first guest here standing by. Yeah, we're going to talk to uh, Kenny Florian. He obviously uh, works on the Fox desk, former two-time title contender. <laughs> Actually, you'll hear you'll hear at the start of the interview, I said, have you ever talked about boxing more in these last three months than you have now? Because, like, as MMA guys, and, and Kenny is, is an MMA guy as an I'm an MMA guy, and as are you, our Loper, uh, <laughs> when you get to the point where you're just talking about boxing for, like, three months, you're like, uh, can I talk about mixed martial arts again? I miss yeah, MMA. It, it's funny. It's like I, I look forward to the next ufc pay-per-view like i used to like back in the day it's thank you boxing yeah so but yeah kenny florian breaking down what happened with uh, mayweather mcgregor on saturday night <laughs> so uh, so obviously the fight went down on saturday night and you talked uh, let me before let me before we get started with the whole fight conversation let me ask you this have you talked about boxing more in your entire life than you have over these past few months <laughs> most likely uh, you know when i was a kid i talked a lot of boxing with my dad but other than that yes uh it has been um uh, pretty amazing how much boxing I've, I've, I've had to talk about <laughs> so with that said kenny you broke down the fight obviously on ufc tonight you talked about it on your podcast but let me just ask kind of a generalized question what did you think of the fight on saturday night you know, listen, I, I thought that there's, first of all, even before the fight, I thought there was very few people that could compete at the highest level in boxing. Um, and certainly even fewer uh, in and around the weight class of, of Floyd Mayweather who can compete um, and, and make it look good uh, against someone like Floyd Mayweather. However, there is levels to this game, and there's certainly levels to the boxing game, and there's none higher than Floyd Mayweather. Um, and the way I saw it, go down, I, I saw Floyd Mayweather that was kind of allowing the fight to kind of uh, extend a little bit, if you will. Um, and I think when you're at the level of Floyd Mayweather, you can kind of uh, take it easy against certain people, certainly against the guy who was in his first, first professional boxing fight. Um, I think we need to remind ourselves that mixed martial arts is a very different game than boxing. Certainly the striking approach is very different. What is right for boxing is wrong for mixed martial arts and vice versa. So I thought that Connor did a great job 
However, um, it was a playful Floyd. I think if he wanted to just turn it on right from the get-go, he could have in the early rounds. He didn't. A lot of people saying because he wanted to see Conor McGregor get tired. Yes, that was definitely part of the game plan. But I think another part of it was just Floyd wanted to extend the fight to make it a little bit more entertaining for the fans, in my opinion. Yeah. Did, did, Conor, do, did Conor do anything in there that really impressed you? You know, I, first of all, I thought he landed a beautiful uppercut. Uh, you know, I think while Floyd um, maybe wanted to extend it a little bit, I don't think he wanted to get hit with any big shot. You know, he definitely didn't want to get hurt during the fight. I thought that uppercut uh, landed a, a few times very well for Connor. Um, and I thought his movement w- w- was very interesting as well. Um, uh, you know, just the fact that he was able to go in there and stay uh, as composed as he was in an arena that he was not familiar with on the biggest stage in combat sports history is unbelievable. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, this is going to be a Conor McGregor that is going to be that much more dangerous, and he's going to pull away from everyone else in the UFC because of the experience he gained against doing what might be the best boxer in history. You know what I mean? And and, uh, imagine the value and the experience that he's going to take away from seeing a guy that was as composed as someone like Floyd Mayweather. Uh, You know, when you fight someone, you're able to pick up a lot of tricks, especially someone who stays as present and aware as Conor McGregor. And I think he's going to learn a great deal from this fight. And any fight going forward is probably going to feel like small potato. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to it's tough to downplay that considering the attention this fight had. I mean, at the end of the day, did the fight play out ultimately how you kind of thought it would? I mean, a lot of people felt like, you know, as the fight wore on, Floyd would take over. I actually felt Connor tried to outbox Floyd a little bit early, which I think was a mistake because I thought, and you said this in the pre-fight, you can't outbox Floyd, you have to outfight Floyd. Uh, but did the fight play out ultimately right. any other different than, than what you expected? No, I mean, I figured it would probably go down that way. And again, Floyd was was pretty playful early on in the fight. Um, So, yeah, I think that's also what allowed Conor to to look pretty good. But, um, yeah, listen, again, I think Conor definitely has boxing skills. But, again, boxing is just one of the many things that we do in mixed martial arts. So it's hard to go out there and beat someone uh, in their specialized profession, especially one as good and as great as Floyd Mayweather. So I, I thought it was an awesome performance. Um, I-, I thought it was great from Connor. Um, again, I-, I admire everything this guy has done in the sport. You won't find a bigger fan than Connor McGregor. But, again, we-, we-, we need to remind ourselves this is Floyd Mayweather uh, that he was going against and um, – you know, I, I thought that he represented the sport of mixed martial arts extremely well, given given everything that he was dealing with. Yeah, considering how much attention was being paid to the fight, and you know, we're talking about maybe five million pay per view buys, which is insane. You know, when you think about it. Yeah. I mean, do, do you feel like the fight did pay? You know, it did pay off, though. It did play out. You know, in a way that we can all appreciate it. It wasn't a farce. It wasn't a sideshow. Ended up being a, a pretty good fight. No, absolutely, and that's that's what it, it seems like both guys really wanted to deliver. One thing's for sure: anytime Conor McGregor fights, whether it's mixed or whatever, you know, and I think that's an, uh, another big reason why he is such a huge star. Uh, this is a guy who proves time and time again that he's out there to fight, and he's out there to pressure guys, and he's out there to win. So he has a style that has always been extremely exciting, and I think Floyd. Uh, as well realize, hey, I'm going to get the guy who, you know, this is his first professional boxing fight. I need to make it entertaining. People are paying $100 for this. I'm going to walk away with around $300 million. Connor's going to walk away with around $100 million. Let's make this fun for the fans. And I think they accomplished that goal. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at, you know, when you look at what Conor McGregor has done, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you could have looked at this fight. I mean, people said it was a, it was a chance for him to make a huge payday. It was a chance for him to get his name even bigger. But I thought that, you know, ultimately the way it played out is he went in there, he fought his ass off, and, and he gave a good performance, and he got beat by one of the greatest of all time. And I don't think there's any shame in that. And I feel like, and see if you agree with me, Kenny, I feel like ultimately Conor McGregor still comes out a winner because I don't think anyone walked away from that fight thinking he's a, he's a lesser fighter or... He went out there, just got out class. Like he made a good showing for himself. No doubt about it. And, and listen, Floyd Mayweather. I don't care how much money he was going to make. I don't think he would have risked uh, his career uh, by coming over to mixed martial arts. So the fact that Conor McGregor was able to say, "Listen, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone in a big, big way, uh, do this media tour, fight the, the best boxer ever uh, in boxing in his realm." 
uh, and go out there and actually go out there to win, I thought was amazing. And it shows what kind of martial artist Conor McGregor is. I mean, to do that at, at his profile, I thought was admirable. It shows that this guy is a true martial artist. And again, he's going to come away uh, an absolute beast heading forward in mixed martial arts. The experience that he gains, uh, I think, is going to be huge. Um, and uh, yeah, for that, he absolutely should be applauded big time. Yeah, let me ask you this question about the fight itself, Kenny. There was one part, and Kenny, and, and uh, Connor addressed this after the fight. He mentioned how his cardio kind of failed him after round six, and that's something that he's noticed in his mixed martial arts career as well. We saw it in the fight with Nate Diaz in the rematch where he started to kind of slow down. Now he got a, a second wind out of that, but as a fighter yourself and a guy who has gone five rounds and gone into championship fights, I know you can't talk about Connor's physiology, you know, what's going on inside his body, but what do you think that is? Because he's now said that, that is a real issue he needs to address. Well, yeah, and first of all, you got to applaud him for being very candid in his assessment. I think that's why he's so good. But also, um, I think, listen, any time you fight a guy at 170 pounds um, against someone who keeps a pace like Nate Diaz, you're going to get tired. It's just, it's just a 25-minute fight. So a lot of times, no matter what kind of conditioning you're in, you're going to get tired when you're in that kind of a fight. And I think we saw it uh, against someone like Floyd Mayweather because – it is simply not his domain. I mean, it's one thing to do 12 rounds in sparring. It's quite another to do it in a professional boxing match against the best ever. And that was my big concern. Um, and a lot of it sometimes isn't even conditioning. A lot of it's that emotional attachment of not having been there before. I see it all the time in guys in the gym. Guys in the gym are doing five rounds. They're looking amazing. And then I go out and see them fight, and I go, what the hell happened? What, you, you did five rounds. What's the big deal? It's the moment. The moment gets to be a little bit too big. Um, and having not seen a professional boxer throw punches at you round after round after round, and then having it you know, happen on fight night, is, again, is a very different thing. Um, part of it's probably conditioning, but a lot of it is just not being familiar with the environment. Yeah, absolutely. So, Kenny, you know, put on your analyst hat for a second because after the fight was over, you know, Connor has said, you know, he's not ready to address his future yet. Uh, he said that, you know, he would like to, you know, do boxing and mixed martial arts both. He was a little hesitant to commit to that a little bit more in the post fight. But, you know, as a guy who calls his fights, as a guy who knows his fights, what do you feel like is next for Connor McGregor? And should he test the waters in boxing again? <laughs> Well, you know, listen, I think that Conor McGregor is a, a very smart businessman. I think that he's keeping his opportunities open. Um, so I think he's being very careful of what he says. And I think he, he, he's going to be able to say, listen, to the UFC and to the boxing world, I can make money either way. I can make a lot of money either way. It's up to you on what you guys want to determine or what the fans maybe want to see. So I think he's really just keeping his uh, options open more than anything else and being a smart businessman in what he says. But for me, if you're asking me, I think he needs to stick to the UFC. That's what he does best. And I think that he can create a similar legacy to what Floyd Mayweather did in boxing. He could do that very same thing in the UFC. Um, he's an even bigger star now, but at the end of the day, he's got money for three lifetimes. I mean, what did he, does he want money for five lifetimes? And I don't fault him for that if he wants even more, but I think he's still a very passionate and talented mixed martial artist. That's what he does best, and that's what he should do. But it, it does get tricky when you, you think about it and you go, wait, listen, I might be able to fight, make 40, 50 million fighting Pauli Malignaggi in a boxing match and maybe make 20 million fighting Nate Diaz in a trilogy fight. What, 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 what would you do? I don't know. For me, I just don't want to see Conor McGregor in his second boxing match going up there with an 0-1 record. I, I just don't think that's a good look. I think this is one thing. You had nothing to lose fighting the best ever. At this point, I think this is where it's kind of that point of diminishing returns, and I think you should stick to what he does best, um, and that's, you know, fighting in the UFC. Yeah. So with that said, Kenny, put on your, your Joe Silva slash Sean Shelby. I, I'm never going to let Joe Silva go, by the way. Uh, Sean Shelby, hat on for a second. <laughs> You're playing matchmaker. Who does Connor fight next? Well, you know, I think it's pretty simple. I think the biggest fight out there right now is, is the Nate Diaz trilogy fight. I think that's the one uh, they, they got to do. Um, I, I think that that's the biggest fight that could happen uh, right now. Um, I, I think you do that at 155 pounds for the belt against Nate Diaz. I think Nate Diaz is absolutely deserving of it. Um, and just in hearing everybody talk about the fight, that's the one everyone wants to see. So 
uh, I think that's the one you got to make. And uh, if I'm able to look a little bit further ahead, there's this, there's this George St. Pierre guy uh, out there as well, which uh, I think would be an interesting fight for the fans as well, whether that's at maybe a catch weight of 165 or 170. I know Connor would probably be down for it, and I know George St. Pierre would be down for it as well. Yeah, if we're ever going to get close enough to, I mean, listen, I understand, you know, it's going to be a long time before we see those Mayweather McGregor numbers again. If we're talking about five million pay per views, but I don't think in our sport there there could be a fight that would be any closer to that than GSP against Connor. Am I wrong? I mean, I don't know it's going to do five million, but I think it would be the biggest fight in mixed martial arts history. I mean, without a doubt, uh, especially you know, if, if George St. Pierre is able to pull off the win against Michael Bisping, uh, I think that makes it even that much more interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the two biggest pay-per-view draws, right? I mean, that would definitely be a, a super fight of epic proportions. And I think, uh, if the UFC is smart, that's the fight that they, they try to put together. And, um, I, I think it would break all the records in the UFC. Yeah. Unless they can get GSP and Connor versus Brock Lesnar. That might be the only other way they could do it. <laughs> that's right. They, they should, they should. <laughs> Look into that. I like that idea too. <laughs> uh, if you're if you're Conor McGregor, you know, and, and and you you come off of this fight, I mean, do you fight again in 2017? Because I know he said he wants to, but personally, I think he ends up taking the rest of the year off. I mean, listen, he's going to make a lot of money, and he didn't really get beat up in the fight. He had a little mouse under his eye, so I think he's okay. But I don't know. What do you think? Do you think he should take the rest of the year off, or do you think maybe he tries to book this Diaz rematch by the end of the year? Well. It- the New York Times article, you'd think that he was on a hospital bed somewhere, <laughs> uh, you know, re- recovering, all cut up, bloodied, and bruised. But, yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, yeah, it's probably in his best interest to kind of wait a little bit. You know, I think he needs to adjust back into mixed martial arts. Uh, so I, I think that kind of give his time and his body a little bit time to rest. It was absolute, an absolute whirlwind for him, I'm sure. So just kind of it, a lot of it's more the, the mental break is there was a lot of craziness uh, around this fight. So if he can kind of unwind a little bit, then kind of slowly go go back into his mixed martial arts training, I think a fight maybe early next year uh, makes a lot of sense. But, you know, for me as a fan, I, I would love to see him tomorrow uh, at a fight. But I think for, for his own sake, for his own career, probably makes more sense for him to rest a little bit and fight early next year. Yeah. Before I get you out here, Kenny, I want to ask your opinion on this because throughout your career, you fought a lot of different guys. You fought guys who were quiet. You fought guys who trash talk. You, you faced it all and you've seen it all. And then as an analyst, obviously you've broken this all down. What do you make of some of the fighters, including Pauli Malignaggi, who have just gone on this offensive, kind of insulting Connor after the fight? We saw Jose Aldo put out that tweet of like the laughing faces. And I know Rafael Dos Anjos took a little shot at him. And then obviously Pauli Malignaggi right. has just kind of gone off for the last two days, just nonsense. Stop talking about Connor. What do you make of that? Because I, I think it's a little petty, in my opinion. Oh, uh, it's a lot of petty. I think. <laughs> you know, I think part of it is, you know, listen. Let's be honest. Those guys want to fight with Connor, right? So if they can kind of, uh, you know, talk about Connor, it's to their best interest, I guess, business wise. I don't like it, but I think those guys are trying to get a fight out of them, um, and they would make millions. I mean. Connor is your ticket to, to, to being rich uh, and it being memorable. So I think that's kind of their angle. As far as Jose Aldo, I mean, there's no way he's going to be able to get a fight against Connor again. He just lost to Max Holloway, a guy who uh, Connor beat as well. So for him, again, realistically, does he think he's going to get a fight with Connor? Probably not. So why is he doing that? And, and, and Aldo's a very respectful guy, but. I think that tweet just came off really badly. It just comes off as jealousy and envy and, you know, it, bitter it, bitterness. It, it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. Yeah, I agree. Kenny, it is always a pleasure, my friend. I appreciate the time. Obviously, keep up the good work on UFC tonight. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about the fight on there as well. And I appreciate the time as always. Thanks so much, man. Always a pleasure. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. That is awesome, man. Kenny Florian right here, Fight Society Podcast. It's Loper and Damon Martin. Follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram at Jeremy Loper at Damon Martin. And you guys can uh, hashtag Fight Society. Make sure they follow you on Snapchat, too. Make sure you give out that name. Uh, At Lope Ness, man. (laughs) Somebody took my name. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Lope Ness. The Lope Ness monster. Just hit me with that in high school. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now listen man the other night we had a great party at my house we did it was kind of like the first party i've had at my house my new house and everybody's having a good time you notice you notice 
Not that this is not a dig. This is just kind of funny. So we did the we did the the gathering at your house for the Bellator pay per view, and then we did the gathering for Mayweather McGregor. I noticed a lot more people showed up. For Mayweather yeah. McGregor. No offense, uh, <laughs> Bellator. <laughs> Well, th- that was like the uh, that was like the pre run, yeah. Because I knew I had that party coming up, but I was like, you know, I should probably do like a little tester <laughs> just to you know see like what well, you know what I'm going to do here. Yeah. But you know, you're not going to have those parties all the time. Those are fun, man. But the thing that I, I really enjoyed was uh, apparently it wasn't so fun in person, but the TV aspect of it they they kept you entertained. They were showing different promos. And the Demi Lovato deal, man, she is so hot. I didn't realize how hot she was. See, she's she's all right. Are she's you kidding right. me? Nice, beautiful, thick. I love it, man. And she's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, too. It's like, listen, she's got a strong bottom game. <laughs> no, I have no, I have no disrespect her at all. She is, uh, she's a tremendous talent. She's I didn't know who great. she was to going into it. Like I knew the name. I'm not a moron. I Mrs. knew the name. Like, I didn't know. I didn't. I knew she was a singer. And that's how I knew her. I knew her because she dated Luke Rockhold, and yeah. then she dated another MMA fighter. I knew she was a big MMA fan. I know the name. I'm not stupid. I knew who Demi Lovato was, but I didn't know like what she. I didn't in my head. I didn't know was she an actress? Was she a singer? Like I didn't know. I what I remembered about Demi Lovato, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I know you're her biographer. Yes. Um, she was a Disney girl, right? Was she a Disney girl? Yeah, she was like one of these young chicks. Yeah, that's I what like, I thought. Yeah. Okay, she was like a Disney girl. So that's how yep. I knew her. I was like, yeah, Disney. A Disney girl. Yep. Yeah, I was, okay. I was trying to decide if it was Disney or Nickelodeon. But she, Whatever. I she yeah, was she, was a, she was that. Yeah, okay. I have kids, man. You know, so I, I you know, force fed all this crap. Okay. And then now they're like, so pop, I'm not wrong. Weird. Yeah, they're I'm pop stars. Okay, I, I, that's what I thought. I thought that's how I knew her. So, but anyways, I didn't really know her going into Yeah, marriage. she is delicious. <laughs> and uh, what about uh, Amelda May? She is, she is tremendous. The news chick on my radio show here in Columbus, Ohio, uh, Kelly Quinn, she absolutely loves her. And it was so funny. She's like not one to stay up late ever. So her and her husband, right before the main event, bail. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is like what the party's for. And they leave. Wouldn't you know her favorite artist performs the Irish National Anthem? Now, that was the Irish National Anthem, yes, right? correct. Okay, game set match that one was pretty cool i gotta be honest with you yeah the whole thing i mean you know there were a lot of issues with the pay-per-view as well i mean obviously there i mean there's a class action lawsuit that's just been filed uh by people who weren't able to watch the pay-per-view online because the the streaming was so bad um and they had to delay the main event because the pay-per-view issues so there was a lot of issues in terms of that but you I mean, almost killed as- my party when you announced that like <laughs> you're like yeah so they're saying uh there's gonna be some delays in the main event everybody's like what <laughs> But it's because Floyd's awesome. You know, Floyd heard that some of the markets were out and he said, hey, listen. Well, I don't think he did it out of the kindness of his heart. I think he did it out of the kindness of his wallet. But also, <laughs> I mean, if you are, you know, a business guy, you're yeah. going to know that those, you're not going to get those buys. Yeah, in the but markets, the, the pay per view, you know? I thought, did, I mean, I thought the, the fight was fun and the pay per view did well. I mean, listen, I'll be the first one to admit I'm a, you know, huge Mara Ronaldo fan. I thought he did a fantastic job. Al Bernstein does a great job. Uh, Pauli Malinaji, I thought, called the fight very well. Afterwards, he hasn't exactly conducted himself in a way that I've been super excited about. Yeah, but what's what's his deal, man? He's been tweeting all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, I mean, he's he's know. really pushing for this fight that's never going to happen. Connor's ne- let's just be honest. Connor will never box again. Well, our, our next guest. Why would up, he? Yeah, our next guest coming up in a minute. Angelo Reyes knows Pauli very well, trains with him, and I asked him that. And I, I, I don't begrudge anyone that likes Paul. I don't dislike Paulie. I don't know the guy. I, I actually tried to get him on our podcast before the fight, and we never were able to schedule it. And then after the fight, I just I put out a tweet uh, on Sunday, and I said, I'm so excited to talk about Connor's next MMA fight and let Paulie Malinaji kind of fade back into obscurity because I knew the name Paulie Malinaji. I watch boxing. I'm not stupid. But Paulie was never a superstar. Paulie was never I – mean, yes, he was a champion, a, a two-division champion, but he was never – Canelo, he was never Mayweather, he was never Triple G, he was always kind of like that, you know, he was a guy, and this is not not insulting him, I'm just being honest, he was the guy who was the champion, and then when he fought the really good guys like Danny Garcia, uh, you know, Amir Khan, those guys beat him, you know what I mean, like he was a good guy, but when he got to the upper level competition, he got beat, now there's no shame in that, because a lot of people can't even get to those fights, but he was never a superstar, and so like, He's a great commentator. He's a phenomenal analyst. It's kind of here, a perfect example. A guy who just left the UFC, who I'm going to miss tremendously, is Brian Stan. Brian Stan was a WEC champion, but he was never a champion in the UFC. Great, good, good fighter, very serviceable guy. 
but he really found a way to shine on the microphone afterwards. Now, that's not an insult to Brian Stan. That's just saying that he was never a champion in the UFC. That's just facts. Pauli Malignaggi was a champion, but he was never a superstar boxer, in my opinion. But he's a great commentator. So he did a great job calling the fights on Saturday night. Afterwards, though, he's just continuing to press that button and press that button and insulting Connor. And then yesterday he says, I want to fight him in a real fight. And I jokingly put out a tweet and everyone thinks it's real. But I said, oh, Paulie wants to fight Connor in a real fight, quote unquote. I guess that means he's coming to MMA because a real fight is MMA. No offense to boxing. Yeah, I mean, so to speak. I mean, a real fight. As close as you're going to get to a real fight is no MMA. Real, yeah, right. Now, Paulie Malignaggi. No chance he comes to. The he UFC. would last. 90 seconds. I mean, is there any word? Is he like, does he have money issues? Like, what's his deal? No, like, he just, for this fight? He wants a he boxing. Never, he never had a big payday fight. Look at his record. He fought a lot of guys that were good. You know, he you know, he fought Adrian Broner is probably the biggest, you know, okay. biggest win right. of his career. Yeah, right. Um, we well, fought Floyd, right? No, no, no. no? He, never, okay. he never got to that point. He, he, he beat Broner, which was definitely the biggest win of his career. Um, he's not hurting. I don't think he's hurting for money, but. The temptation of fighting Connor and getting a twenty-five or a thirty or forty million dollar payday potentially, I get it. I don't. I don't fault him for that. Was it Adrian Broner? Uh, was that the fight that he had with the girlfriend thing? Like where he was like, yeah. someone was taking a side piece. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. See that Polly Malinaji kind of funny when he was like, you know, because that was also the time of like Jersey Shore. It was yeah. right around the same time, so he kind of had this guy, sort of a heel, if you want to look at him that the way. Guy, yeah, yeah, you know. But if you want to like him, he's kind of funny. You know, whatever. Yeah. This not funny at all. It just makes you look. It makes you look small, dude. Like it you know makes what I'm you look desperate. And most people don't even know you. So like, no offense, but like you know, that's this is the impression you're making on people that you're like trying to position yourself in the middle of somebody else's fight to get your own fight. That's never gonna happen. Like if you're Conor McGregor and you fought Floyd Mayweather, who is the best boxer of this era, fighting anybody else in boxing is going to be a step down. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean he can't win, or that doesn't mean he can't set that up, but if you're Conor McGregor and you're going to... You just had the biggest fight of all time. All time. It's going to do... If it does 5 million buys, which is ridiculous. In boxing, what else are you going to get? Yeah. Are you going to fight Triple G, who is a freaking killer, knockout artist, and a legit 154-pound fighter, and go out there and get your head knocked into the third row? Yeah, you'll make more money, but you're also going to lose face in that fight. Triple yeah. G is going to knock your face off. You know that's not the risk you're running against the Mayweather. No offense. Um, and Triple G is not a star. He's about to make some real money for his fight with Canelo in three weeks. He's the best in boxing. Him and Canelo, yeah, they're both. Do you think he smashes Canelo? I think he's going to knock him out. I, I do too. Yeah, out. I think but, he smashes. But uh, what are you? No offense to Canelo Alvarez. I mean, I think he's a tremendous fighter, but I mean, I think that Triple G is the truth. But man, what are you? What are you? Heat. What are you gaining from fighting either one of those guys? Nothing. I you think the, the whole. Th that's what I think people are missing. The whole aspect of this fight that was fun is it was like the old UFC days. What if? Yeah. What if an elite striker in MMA went to boxing? And whoa, can he fight the greatest guy ever? Really? Yeah. Can that happen? Okay, cool. That seems like it's about to happen. And then it. They put it together, and then you know everybody's kind of got a naysay, but everybody deep down really wants it to be an amazing fight. And, yeah. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if? Whoa, you think Chuck Connor might actually have a chance? Oh, well, then more people say he has a chance. It gets more exciting. They hear things. Floyd's not training. Floyd's this and forty, and and then you watch the fight and you think, well, I, uh, yeah, right before it happens, you're like, man, it's probably it's not even going to pay off, but it'll be cool anyway. Then it be, turns out to be fucking amazing. Connor, I mean, it really was a back and forth. A lot of people are trying to grandstand a little bit and say that Floyd would, obviously had a plan. It, duh. Everybody has a plan, man. Come on. I, everybody on the undercard had a plan. It's how well do you execute that plan. And Floyd did a masterful job at executing a plan. But in the process, there were some scary moments for Team Mayweather. Yeah, he got hit. No one walks into a, a game plan and, and loses rounds. And I understand Floyd. That's why I said Connor's best chance was in the early rounds because that's typically when Floyd is warming up, getting his opponent's timing down. That's what Floyd does. He's a master. He's one of the best ever for a reason. But the reason I said that you, you, when, you, when you set up that game plan, it's still dangerous because guess what? Connor hits hard. And Floyd didn't want to get hit. And he got hit. So that's why I said like the whole idea that like he didn't he didn't he Mayweather let him win those rounds. No. No one lets you win rounds if you're if you're in if you're in boxing or mixed martial arts, 
You don't just concede rounds. You don't just say, oh, I'll take a couple punches. Come on now. You know what I mean? So you're it, just trying to discredit Connor for no reason. Do you think Imelda May uh, won the uh, national anthem contest? That was a terrible version. <laughs> I was going to say, what is this? Oh, God, this is like somebody like outside filming. It sounds like the 40s. Oh, I'm not even going to do that to our listeners. <laughs> uh, I liked her version. <laughs> I think it's so cool, man. The Irish National Anthem. Shout out to all our Irish listeners, man. Thank you so much. Everybody who uh, came came to the United States to watch this fight. Thank you so much. And, you know, you're so kind to visit. And come back anytime, man. Those fans are. <laughs> come back I know, anytime. I know. I feel like, yeah, come on back to the house. Come you know? on back down. And- hey, you ain't got to rush off. Where are you going? Where are you going back home? Come back to America. More people in Michigan than Ireland. Huh? I think there's more people in Michigan than Ireland. Maybe. It's bigger. That's weird. I always talk. I have some friends in Ireland, and uh, my buddy Niall, I always talk to him, and uh, we always joke because, like, I talk about, like, how I drive to a lot of events. Like, I'm driving to Pittsburgh next this month, next month, for Rockhold and David Branch. Pittsburgh's three hours away. That's a that's a short car trip in yeah. the Midwest. When you say that, when he, I said it to him, and he's in Ireland, he's like, my God, you can drive across the entire country of Ireland in three hours. That's like, wild, You know right? what I mean? Like, when you think about how small it actually is, you know what I mean? He's that like, yeah, crazy. Like, you can drive. I think he said you can drive from one end to the other in, like, five hours, like, from Belfast all the way down. Well, that's, like, like, the old thing, like, you know, when you meet somebody, like, uh, somebody's like, hey, man, from Jamaica. And you're like, oh, dude, you know, Usain Bolt, <laughs> Bob Marley. Like, you know, you start naming all these people, and they're like, okay, guy, you know, it's a... Uh, pretty you know decent sized country we yeah. just uh, don't know each other but maybe that's possible in ireland it's small it's a small country but jamaica was a terrible example but <laughs> think about the influence that ireland's had look at the influence ireland's had. i'm irish i mean my family's irish yeah so. I found out i'm a lot irish i took the ancestry i always thought i was native american not not ever <laughs> I'm so European, it's ridiculous. Oh, aren't you like Eastern European too? Like, well, that it turns out that, uh, oh, I'm Viking, but like it turns out that uh, there's a, a concentration of people from my family that are from exactly where the Mayflower left. And like I'm early settlers to Appalachia. Look at you. Yeah, look at me. I thought I was Native American. <laughs> Other side. <laughs> you've been, Sorry. You've been, you've been supporting the wrong team this exactly. entire time. That's like, I'm a Dolphin fan. Like, hey, guy, you know what? You're actually a Jet fan. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my God. Your whole life. It's ruined. It, it's, I would, yeah, if I was a Jet fan. This I took a little better, obviously. <laughs> English and Irish. That's you already got it pretty tough being a Dolphins fan. Yeah, some German, but Viking a lot. I like that. A lot of Vikings. Yeah, so I'm going to watch that show now, Vikings. I haven't watched that yet. Your cousin's on there. <laughs> hey, that's cousin whoever, <laughs> the Avenger. Yeah. Did they all have cool names? Do you watch that show or no, what? No, I never watched it. You heard why? It's good. Why don't you watch it? Uh, I just never got into it. I Everyone that tells me, because I love Game of Thrones, tells me I should watch Vikings, but I've never watched it. So Even my father-in-law's on that, and I'm not on that. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, so you mentioned Luke Rockhold and David Branch. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, coming up in September in uh, about three weeks' time. It's the weekend after uh, we got – I'm trying to think. We got this weekend, we got Stefan Struve and Alexander Kovolkov mm-hmm. in the Netherlands. Then we move on to UFC 215, which is Demetrius Johnson, Ray Borg, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, and Amanda Nunes. And then the weekend after that – is rock hold. I love that we get back into like boom, 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 fights, fights, yeah. fight. You know, because it, it really, we kind of took off the whole month of August. Rock hold branches on the same night as Triple G and Canelo, which is kind of a heartbreaker. Well, that's cool. So if you're in the Columbus area, come party with us. Uh, we're going to be uh, right here. I'll give you the address here in just a few minutes, but it's a place on uh, Cleveland Avenue. It's a very nice place. <laughs> Are you going to join me there, Damon? I'll be in Pittsburgh. Oh, that's that's it's disappointing. Yeah, I'll be in Pittsburgh. Otherwise, I would. The uh, establishment is uh, is rather nice. My name's on the uh, on, on the billboard out there, <laughs> as you can see when you pull up, man. So, uh, yeah, if you guys uh, want to check it out, if you guys go to uh, my Twitter, I, I tweet out where we're going to be and uh, all the parties that we're going to have. 
right here uh, in Columbus. You know, obviously you got to be in the Columbus, Ohio area. But if you find yourself and you want to party, fight society, I'll get you in absolutely free. How about that? There you go. And uh, sir, I should do a because we do this Ugno party. It's called Ultimate Guys Night Out, and basically certain people win for them and a friend a night of like ultimate party and with me and uh, all of my friends in like a private suite inside the strip club and they get all their all the drinks are free all the food is free and we just hang out and watch the fights so the cool thing is, is I, I could for sure get them to show uh the canelo triple g fight and the ufc fights that night I kind of feel like maybe I should not go to Pittsburgh and just stay and watch that and you can see everything right I know that's what I'm saying I can see the whole thing it is a good time. It sounds like it. I mean, I hate to brag a little bit, but it is probably the best time you're going to have. It, definitely in the Midwest, that's for sure. <laughs> definitely in the Midwest. <laughs> you're not going to have a better time anywhere in the Midwest. I mean, do, watching fights? I mean, it, so the place is called Sirens, all right? That's, that's all you need to know. Sirens on Cleveland Avenue in Columbus, Ohio. Any of the UFC pay-per-views, I'm always there. So if you guys want to stop by. Yeah, but before we get to... The rest of the UFC stuff, because we are getting back into fighting. We are getting back into M MMA, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, I let's like take care of this uh, This last interview yeah. with Mayweather McGregor. Yeah, we're going to talk to uh, Coach Angelo Reyes, of course. Come up, He came up under Coach Freddie Roach. Uh, he works with uh, Frank Mir, who a lot of people know he's his boxing coach, and he worked with uh, Jessica Andrade and some other people. But we had him on before the fight. Now we're going to talk to him after the fight. And uh, it's pretty clear he would like to see a Conor McGregor Pauly Malignaggi fight, but he also explains, as I teased earlier, he tells why Floyd Mayweather wore the ski mask to the ring, which I thought was rather interesting. I had not heard that story, so we'll let Coach Angelo Reyes tell us that story. With everything unfolding over the weekend with Mayweather McGregor, we talked to him before the fight. We got to have him on after the fight. He's one of my favorite people in the sport, one of the best coaches in the sport. Welcome back to the show today, Angelo Reyes, Coach. Let me just start off by asking the, the very big obvious question. What did you think of Mayweather McGregor now that it's all said and done? I thought it was fantastic. It worth every penny. Worth every penny. I, I, I believe that uh, Mayweather, he, he delivered on his promise. He said he was going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He said he was going to come forward. Um, Gregor went out there and did try to knock Floyd out, so neither guy really lied. And, um, you know, a hundred dollars, man. That's, I mean, again, if you were upset, if you're a fight fan period, the undercard was solid. You got to see, uh, but Jack won a world title against Nathan cleverly. That was a very good fight. Um, you got to see Javante Davis, uh, you know, uh, Andrew Chibiti, uh, Steve Cunningham, but Mayweather McGregor, if all you cared about was the main event, guys, what more do you want? You wanted an action fight. You wanted to see drama. You, 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 you wanted your heart to race and wonder, could this guy do it? Could the unicorn pull it off? And, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, all of us, Damon, as you know, who have stayed the course and have said there's no way McGregor would, would stand a chance, um, you know, what we saw is exactly what we knew was going to happen. And, and you remember, I even talked to you, I believe, um, after I'd seen Pauli Malignaggi. And um, that's why my official prediction when it went on uh, Yahoo Sports was, you know, I, I, I listened to everything that Pauli told me to happen in sparring. So I, I thought it would be an eighth-round TKO for, uh, uh, for Floyd, but it happened exactly the way um, I had described, uh, described it. And it happened exactly the way Pauly kind of explained it to me, too. So, you know, when you have the insider information and you kind of know what was going on, it's, it's, it, it, it's hard. It's easy to get caught up in what some people may think. But if you don't know, if you don't know boxing, then you won't understand why that was such an easy fight for Floyd. And by the way, Damon, can I ask you, do you even know why Floyd wore the ski mask? To the fight? I did, did, you, did you research why he did it? I did not, so please inform me on this one. Okay, so if you guys go to fighthype.com, um, uh, uh, you know, Ben Thompson, he always gets all of the raw exclusives um, of Floyd Mayweather. At the end, Floyd explains it, but it's pretty self-explanatory. To us in the boxing culture, we were kind of laughing about it because um, it's Floyd Mayweather's kind of... Um, owed to like the dead presidents, you know, the movie Dead Presidents where, oh, yeah. where you know he put the ski he put the ski mask on because it's a bank robbery. You know, basically he was saying it's a heist. Like Connor actually believed that he could beat Floyd Mayweather and all that happened is he got fooled into into the biggest 
uh, pay-per-view in the biggest uh, payday and money-making opportunity of all time. So, uh, you know, um, uh, that that's why you put on the ski mask, which I thought was pretty awesome, man. That that was really awesome. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, Connor tried, Damien. No one you think of it. Like, like, are you kind of in the same sentiment, sentiment that a lot of people are? Well, Connor did better than we would expect it. What do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, I thought Connor did. I think Connor did a lot better than most people expected him to do. He went out there and, and, and went for it. You know what I mean? He switched stances. He, he landed some good jabs. He had a good uppercut. And, yeah, I mean, I just talked to Kenny Florian earlier today about this. And, uh, you know, he had mentioned that, you know, he thought, you know, Floyd kind of, I, I don't, I, this sounds terrible, kind of took it easy on Connor in the first few rounds, kind of left the openings. But listen, it's a fight. And, and just like anything else, you know, you don't really let any. You know, you don't want to let someone hit you. No matter what you're doing, you don't want to let someone hit you. And Connor landed a couple of decent punches. You know, I mean, listen, man, I've watched Floyd for many years, especially since the De La Hoya fight, and that guy just doesn't get hit very often. I mean, I remember sitting and watching him get rattled a little bit by Shane Mosley, and everyone freaked out because that's like the hardest we've seen Floyd get hit in like ten years. So uh, I thought Connor did well. You know, considering, listen, the odds were against him. The guy went out there and fought. We, I think the one thing we learned about Conor McGregor in that fight is he wasn't just a payday. He went out there trying to win, and I think that's admirable. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, and the, and the hard thing about that statement, Damien, and, and again, and you know for a fact, my friend, I catch, I catch a lot of hate from a lot of trollers out there when all I'm doing is I'm actually just telling you facts. You got to know your facts. And, you know, here's a fact. Here's what everyone got to see. You saw a 40-year-old man fight a 29-year-old man, a man who's past his peak and prime to his own admission at 40, and a man who's at his peak and at his prime in the sport of MMA. You saw a smaller man, and that's clear. That's evidently clear when you watch it on TV. Floyd weighed in at 149, but he probably literally weighed in 150 on fight night versus Connor probably was closer to 170, maybe even a little over 170. So you saw a height difference. And what you saw is exactly what we in the boxing world have been saying this whole time. You know, size, none of that really matters unless the skill is there. And Connor just does not have the boxing skills developed yet to have been able to do this monumental task. Do I believe Connor's a good, good, uh, good athlete and he can learn? Absolutely. But from the beginning, Damon, it's not like I was just saying it this year. I've been saying it and I've been catching a lot of hate for it from the beginning when they asked me, what do you think of Connor McGregor? And I would always say, Conor McGregor's best attributes in MMA is not his boxing. His boxing actually needs a lot of work. What, what his best attribute is, is ability to free flow with his karate. And because he can throw those kicks, the kicks that don't look so hard, but they actually are. And I know because I'm from the karate background, so I know when Conor's throwing that front kick and that, those spin kicks, those are hurting his opponents, and it's making his opponents drop their hands down. So then it's a lot easier for this massive man in Conor McGregor to be able to hit them with, their, with, their, with his hands and knock them out. Well, this isn't MMA. This is boxing. And just like if you were to jump in the mat and do key grappling and then no key grappling, and there's a difference between the two, boxing in boxing is different than boxing in MMA. And you remember, Damon, I told you this. We've had this conversation even off air before. I'm so happy this fight got made because I am tired of being in the MMA industry where everybody seems to under think that they're, that MMA boxing and boxing boxing is the same. It's not. And you know, I mean, even with Frank, I had to actually bring him into the boxing world. Kind of show him that world. Explain it to him. And then we went ahead and free flowed and played with it and started playing with it again with this karate. And, you know, I had to start with a base. And then once he got the boxing base, then we went back to, okay, now here's how we're going to use it all for MMA. And here's how you're going to do this. And here's how you're going to do that. Now, one thing that Connor said, that is very important that people should just remember. This is just a fact. He went on the Conan O'Brien show and he said, there's many ways you can beat Floyd Mayweather, but boxing is not one of them. So what did Connor do, Damien? He stuck with his MMA coaches. He went in there with an MMA game plan and he tried MMA moves to try to beat Floyd Mayweather in a boxing match. And what did we just see? Guess what, Connor? You're wrong. Um, 
you know, none of your, your techniques would have worked anyways. Floyd pretty much showed you one move and knocked you out doing it that way. That's just facts. Those are just truths. Hate on what I'm saying all you want. Those are just facts, and those are just your truths. And at the end of the day, if Connor actually wants to go back to boxing again, which I think he should. I, I, I really liked how he got the fans involved, and, and he's a good pay-per-view draw. And I think he should stick to boxing, man. I think he'll make more money in boxing than he would in MMA at this point anyways. Um, but I think he should actually get real boxing trainers to show the just show him and teach him, you know, maybe ask Barry McGuigan to help him out. Maybe ask Shane McGuigan to help him out. Maybe, you know, someone in the UK or whoever, maybe even call finally now, humble yourself and call a Freddie Roach and see, you know, go ahead and pay his rates and, and see if maybe Freddie can help you out. Um, but I think the next great match for, uh, for Conor McGregor to test himself out in boxing again is Paulie Molinagy. Paulie again is retired. He's at the tail end. He's already uh, passed it. He's been broadcasting this whole time. We we know what Polly brings to the table as a boxer. So if if Connor really humbles himself and 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 learns the craft and the art of boxing instead of always saying it's this limited art. I mean, he just found out how unli- how it's not limited. In fact, there's so many different ways to beat you in boxing. Uh, what Floyd just did is he showed you one way and he beat you in one way. Um, you know, uh, just to end on this point, because I know I'm kind of ranting a little bit, Damon, but I said before, Floyd Mayweather is like Greg Maddox. He has many different pitches to strike you out. In this particular fight, he felt so confident that Connor doesn't know how to hit a fastball that just like Greg Maddox, who was only throwing 88 miles to 90 miles an hour as a fastball, he decided to throw nine innings with just one fastball and just say, no, nope, I'm throwing a fastball, go ahead and try to hit it. I'm throwing a fastball, go ahead and try to hit it. And the one chance Connor had was when he threw that first uppercut in the first round to show his quote-unquote mystic Mac power, and what did, what did Floyd do? Floyd got hit, Floyd kept coming forward, Floyd did exactly what he said he was going to do. He's going to walk him down, he's going to work the body, He's, he's going to punish him, and then he's, he's going to knock him out. A, and he would, and Connor would have ended up on his back if he had just kept throwing punches. But he, he, he went for a full minute not throwing any punches at all. So, of course, Robert Burke had to stop the fight. Yeah. Let me ask you, because it's not it's not your job, uh, Angelo, to defend or talk about, you know, I'm not going to make you sound like you're the representative of Paulie Malinaji, but I complimented Paulie on, on Saturday night, and I said, you know, he, he when he was calling the broadcast, he did a great job. He, he, I Listen, I was one of the people calling for him not to work the broadcast. I thought at some point it went a little overboard when he was confronting him during press week and stuff. I said, you know what? I, that's when you start crossing the line of being involved in the broadcast. But to his credit, Paulie did an amazing job in the broadcast. He's a great analyst. I think he does a fantastic job and always has. I think he's really found his place uh, doing that. He's a two-time world champion, but I think, he, I think he may be even a better analyst than he was a boxer. He does a tremendous job. But after the fight, you know, he's kind of continued on Twitter and, you know, basically, you know, calling Connor words and calling him out. And I understand he's trying to land a fight, but is there a certain point where it's like you have to kind of, like, you have to kind of cut it off and say, like, because it's like he was being genuine on the broadcast, but now he's saying all these things about Connor again. Like, what, what, which way are we look? Which way are we leaning here? No, no, no. Here's the thing. Let me just explain this to people because I do know Paulie, guys. And here's the thing: there's nothing ungenuine about Paulie. Everything that he's doing is 100 percent genuine. So this again goes to this new MMA fan base who just turned on a boxing pay per view and is watching this. They're like sitting there going, "Ah, oh, Paulie, this," or even like like you, Damon, like you, you know when you were saying, "I don't think you should do a broadcast." Here's the thing: if you just know the history of of what Paulie has done. Paulie had a beef with Adrian freaking Broner. Paulie was the champion. Broner took the belt from him. Then Medina took the belt from Broner, and then Medina got to fight Floyd. So as Paulie won that split decision against Broner, he'd be fighting Floyd. So you want to talk about beef and losing money and all of that, you would sit there and go, oh, man, Polly's got a huge beef with Broner. Well, maybe he shouldn't call a Broner fight. Well, guess what he did, Damien? He calls a Broner fight like a few months later, called it perfectly down the middle professional. Because that is what Polly does. He is a professional. And this is actually what when I said on Junkie, 
uh, on MMA Junkie, quit lying, Connor. I felt like Connor wasn't being a professional. Look, man, don't go out there and tell people that you, you had quality contest when I just saw the man and he wasn't contest. Like, just don't lie. Just don't lie. Like, it's okay. It's okay to not say anything. It's okay to say no comment. But when you flat out start lying to people, that's unprofessional. And Polly not once, Damon, this whole time, hasn't lied. What, you know, when the job was done and he called it straight down the middle, and we can even right now talk about the, the telecast, Damon, that Polly called it straight down the middle. I kind of felt like it was, it was a little pro Connor on the other side. Like, Polly was just calling it straight down the middle. And, you know, now the, see this, the fight is over. Polly realistically has beef with Connor. It has nothing to do with, uh, with wanting a fighter now with Connor. He just wants to punch Connor in the mouth. And that's why he's already said, I'll do it on a winner take all because I just want to fucking punch you in the mouth. I'm tired of you, Connor. You treated me like a punk. You you sat there and you put me in the crack house. You didn't give me any respect. Um, I beat your ass for 12 rounds, you know, on, on our sparring. Um, and and now it's it's a real beef, which is why I'm sitting there going, "This is what we look for in boxing. This is actually the pay per view fight we look for in boxing. Someone who has a real beef with someone else." And they really don't like each other. They don't get along. They're not going to be friends. Great. Let the promoters, now you let the promoters and the managers handle it. Because Barkley Center, March, St. Patrick's Day, would be a bigger day for Conor McGregor against Pauly Malignaggi because this hate is real between uh, Pauly and Conor. Um, it's a bigger payday for, for Conor. It'll be okay. I mean, it's not like Pauly hasn't made a lot of money. He made money on the Hatton fight. So, He'll probably make a pretty good amount, but I definitely think that Connor is getting paid more money to fight someone like Maul Naji in a boxing match on pay per view cuts than he would fighting a Ferguson or a Khabib or a Kevin Lee because, you know, respect all those guys in MMA, but the biggest other name in MMA in that, in that 155 branch is Nate Diaz, who choked out Connor McGregor. So, you know, unless you want to pay Nate a whole lot of money, Damien. Um, I really think that uh, uh, Connor should just stick to the boxing. And let me say one, this last thing about that, too. You have to remember that it's very difficult to already convert into boxing. And, and Connor, it was trying. He conditioned himself. He went in that groove. I actually think it's more dangerous for him to go back to MMA in December because it's going to take some time for him to get his MMA timing back. So it's actually better for him to just continue the boxing timing get better into boxing. He said he had a good time in it. Well, great. Take a break. Start training again around maybe uh, October. Get ready for a, 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 a March fight around um, January, right after the new year. Do a training camp. St. Patrick's Day, Barkley Center, Malinaji McGregor. McGregor, Malinaji, however you want to call it. But I think that uh, Zufa Boxing can get involved. Dana White can get involved. Lorenzo Fakita can get involved. You already saw Dana White say it was a pure pleasure to work with Al Heyman. Well, guess who does the negotiating for Polly Malinaji's boxing matches? Al Heyman. So, you know, pretty easy. Pretty easy. It's, it's pretty, this is pretty easy. I don't know why people are telling me that fight's not going to happen when actually if Connor wants to make an easier or a, a better money against an opponent who's already retired. And he, he isn't. I mean, Pauly Malinaji will admit to you, Damien, he's not Floyd Mayweather. So wouldn't you be a little bit compelled to find out, wow, with this real beast, and maybe you don't like Pauly, maybe you do like Pauly, but you want to see Connor beat him up. Like, I think that makes more money on a pay-per-view scale. What do you think? I think it'd make a lot of money, and uh, and to that point, you said he works with Al Heyman, but he's not under contract to a different promoter, so I think uh, Zufa Boxing, you know, Dana was teasing that last week, and, you know, wearing the t-shirt and all that stuff during the media tour, uh, it would absolutely be huge. I think Connor's, you know, I think Connor fighting Nate Diaz does make a lot of sense, because it would be a big fight, and obviously it's the biggest fight the UFC could do right now, uh, but I, I, yep. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't disagree at all. Listen, I, you know, I, I've had my opinions about Pauly and, and Connor throughout this entire thing, but at the end of the day, can I lie and say it wouldn't be a huge fight? Yeah, it'd absolutely be a huge fight, and they'd both probably make a lot more money, you know, assuming that it was promoted as a boxing match. I'm sure Connor and Paulie would both, you know, make a lot more money than Connor would against Nate Diaz. That's just the nature of boxing business versus MMA, and that's not that's not a knock on MMA, by the way. That's just how it's that's just how it works right now. 
Right, right. And here's the thing, too, that when people say, like, I was the first one to say making Mayweather-McGregor was going to be easy, and just like what Dana said, it was easy, making mcgregor Marlon would be easy, and I'll tell you why. It's because Polly just wants to beat his ass. It has, you know, like, right now, Polly will take B-side money. It doesn't fucking matter. Polly just wants to beat his ass because Polly 100% believes he will stop Conor McGregor. Everything that Polly told me in private before we even went public with it is exactly what we saw on Saturday night. So the fact that Polly Malinaji, who was at his best at 140, he became so great at his skill of boxing that his jab was so clear and his positioning is so good that he was able to win the 147 championship against Sevchenko as the opponent going to Sevchenko's country. You know, Polly is, we already know how amazing of a boxer Polly is, but we also know that Polly's not a power puncher. We know that. I mean, again, we, we, we don't even hide behind it. So the fact that Pauli Malinaji is sitting there saying, I will stop Conor McGregor. Well, don't we want to see, is Conor going to be able to stop Pauli and actually show us that he can humble himself to really learn the art of boxing? Or is he going to remain cocky and think that his way is the right way when he can actually get real boxing trainers and train him? Then, is Pauli at his retired state now? He's going to be 37 already. You know, he can Pauli do the impossible? Or, 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 you know, right now I know that the Vegas betting odds say it's uh, Pauli minus 180, Connor plus 160. So, you know, man, I mean, again, people are already talking about it. Let's just make, make it happen, baby. Make it happen. Let me ask you this, Angelo, you know, kind of moving away from that into another aspect of boxing. You know, we've heard, uh, you know, there were, there were a lot of people who were on, on board with this fight. There were a lot of people who were, who were not. Uh, you're a guy who's been around the sport for a long time, so you know it. What did you think of Oscar De La Hoya's comments when he dropped that tweet on uh, on, on Saturday, you know, the big F you towards, you know, the, the fight and, you know, kind of degraded? And he's had some words about that before. Uh, I don't know if you know Oscar very well, but I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on, on that whole thing with one guy just kind of insulting the idea that this fight was even happening. Yeah, no, I mean, that's just sad, man. That's, that's just sad. Like, look, guys, don't hate on other people's success. Just, you know, like I, I, on KateSiders.com, I sat there on the post fight and I said, congratulations to you, Connor. Please take a break. You're, you and your family made a lot of money now. Please take the rest. You know, uh, congratulations on making this event happen. Um, for someone like Oscar to be, you know, pretty much, I mean, it's a jerk move. It's an ass move because people like me were going to buy Canelo uh, Triple G anyways. Hardcore fans were going to watch Canelo Triple G anyways. You know, it, it's already a sold out event. I mean, Jesus, man, you don't need to whore yourself around and tag your name to Mayweather McGregor by saying something stupid like that. Um, but maybe he did it as a PR move. I know that one of the funny images I saw was somebody put out uh, a picture meme of, Floyd's laughing and Connor laughing, and then it showed the tweet that Oscar did, you know, fuck you or something like that. You're a disgrace to boxing. And then next to Connor and Floyd's face laughing, it showed a picture of Oscar wearing the lingerie <laughs> fishnet stockings with the gloves and, 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 and the heels. And I mean, I think again, you know, it's no disrespect. I, I, and I mean, I'm, that's, that, that's more of like a, hey man, you know, here you are, you've been known to, take cocaine and you've been known to have to go to rehab. Don't talk about disgracing the sport of boxing when really do just stay in your lane. Like you don't have to do that. And I think that that's why Dana White gets on Bob Arum all the time too, is because, you know, Bob, Bob's making money, man. Bob's made so much money. What the hell does he care? You know, like I, I just think that Bob is so old. He actually doesn't care. He's like, I'm an old man and I'm going to say what I want. And you know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, Oscar's younger. He should know better, but you know, he did what he did. And, um, now we're going to get to see Triple G Canelo. Um, I don't agree with, with, uh, with what, um, um, uh, Oscar did. Um, but Hey, whatever, man. I mean, I, like I said, I don't agree with what Connor did. You know, I, I, I didn't agree with Connor lying about things. So, so it's the same thing, but definitely, uh, Oscar didn't do a service to himself. Um, I think that in general, the boxing community is very happy. They're very happy with Floyd. They're very happy, actually, that Floyd got to end the career the way he wanted to end it. Just think about it. You said yourself, Damien, you've been watching Floyd since that De La Hoya fight, right? So have you ever seen a crowd so happy and cheering when, when Floyd knocked him out and, you know, Floyd got to have the swan song? And, and you know, it was, it was, it's like 
I, I believe that what this did was it put boxing and MMA in the mainstream. And that's what we want. We want more Super Bowl type fights that regular people at Starbucks will talk about MMA or boxing. And as much as I wish people are going to talk about Tony Ferguson versus Conor McGregor at a Starbucks, they won't. But they will talk about Conor McGregor. And they will talk about Floyd Mayweather. And now that Pauli Malignaggi got to be so mainstream, they will talk about the Italian kid who talks a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to do that. Like, now mainstream public can get pulled in. So, um, so and, and, and I hope that if Conor does go back to MMA, um, don't hate on him, guys. You know what I mean? He, he did something really cool. Um, but I will say that I, I, I still think that I still think Nate Diaz won the second fight anyways, and if he were to fight Nate Diaz on a third fight, um, I think it would be very, very dangerous for Connor. And what I'm actually afraid for, for Connor, is let's say Damien, he loses to Nate Diaz in December. Now what's Connor's legacy? I mean, what's Connor's legacy now? You know, versus if Connor just goes back to boxing again, maybe he wins, maybe he loses to Polly, but hey, you know, at least he's keeping the MMA name out there still. He's still the two-time champion. He's still the Mystic Mac. He's still doing all of that. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully, if, if Connor keeps going the way he's going, and um, he just doesn't do t- any stupid things, you know, as he gets older, um, he could end up being like the mainstream name for both combat sports. Actually, if he just does it the right job. So, I, I, I hope again. Um, he even mentioned it in the in the press conference. He said. Um, there's a lot of sharks out there, so we're going to see what the sharks do. So hopefully, uh, Connor can stay away from the sharks and uh, and and continue success to him and his family. Yeah, well, we made it through the other side. The insanity has officially come to an end. We're going to move on to some mixed martial arts in the future, and obviously some great boxing matches. Before I get you out of here, Angelo, we mentioned there's a big fight coming up in a few weeks. Who's your pick, Canelo or Triple G? Yeah, we were just talking about that today, man, brother. That is. You know what, this this fight, man, because I, I know you're excited about this too, but I'm just going to talk, not popularity, I'm going to talk technical, technical aspect of this fight. This could be our 2017 version, ladies and gentlemen, of Sugar Ray Leonard versus Marvin Hagler. The styles are, are, are pretty similar in the sense that Golovkin's going to come forward, he hits you with that shotgun jab, he works you to the body, and uh, just like Marvin Hagler says, you know, he's like the Pac-Man, like the video game. He just keeps chomping at you, chomping at you, coming forward, and that's go often. Well, we know that Canelo, with the cinnamon red hair and, uh, and, and the flash, you know, he's a little bit like a Sugar Ray Leonard. And, um, and we know that he's, kind of, he's moving up to the higher weight class here. Um, Canelo really is a 154-pound fighter, so he's moving up to fight the legitimate champion. Um, and, and Golovkin at the higher weight class. So um, it's a 50-50, my friend, but I am leaning Gennady Golovkin, and I'm leaning Gennady Golovkin late stoppage, I want to say round 10, 11, or 12. But I don't believe Golovkin will take a step back. I think he's coming forward. I think he's going after him the same way uh, Floyd went after Connor. Yeah. So um, who are you picking? Who are you picking, Damien? I, I got Golovkin as well. You know, I think uh, I, I think that Canelo is a great tactician, and he's really worked on his power punching, and I think he has a lot of skills in this fight. I think if you're looking skill for skill, he matches Golovkin, but then when you add in the size and the power that Golovkin's going to pack in that fight, I think that's the difference. They're both skill for skill, very, very good boxers are both very technically sound but I think when you add in that little extra you know, X factor so to speak which is the power I mean Golovkin has just got so much power in his punches so many knockouts to his credit I think that's going to add up round over round and I agree with you it was like you're reading my mind I think you know late late into the fight 10th 11th round we could see a stoppage and I like Golovkin to pull it off Man, well, I'm, I'm really happy that I know a little bit about this stuff, David. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you and I agree. That's awesome. <laughs> well, Angelo, it's always a pleasure, my friend. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm sure we'll have you on again soon. But thank you for all your insight before and after the fight. And uh, cannot wait to see how this Canelo Triple G fight unfolds. Obviously, you're going to be working with uh, your fighters coming up, Frank Mir and Juliton, who I spoke to last week. So I'm sure we will speak again in the near future about something maybe a little more mixed martial arts related next time. Yeah, or, or maybe you'll be speaking to me about me being a part of the coaching staff of Malinaji versus McGregor. You never know. <laughs> you never know what these things. <laughs> I love it. We'll talk, we'll talk to you soon.
All right, thanks, All right. my friend. Bye bye. I love that movie, and I love that he did that. That's amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. I was like, because he asked me, he's like, Do you, have you heard this story? I said, no, I've not heard this story. And I was like, there was a reason behind him wearing the ski mask. I thought that was kind of cool. I love when we find stuff out, because, you know, a lot of people were just like, well, it's just a fashion statement. A lot of people are wearing zippers. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay. I saw Lope came in the studio today wearing a ski mask because he was paying homage to Fully Mayweather. So. That's right. I'm <laughs> just stealing listeners. <laughs> All of them. And you know what, man? I, I say I, I had so much fun watching these fights. There were some cool fights on the undercard, too. But like you said, I am so ready to get back to MMA. So. You know what I realized? You know what I realized watching this entire show? Because I really did enjoy it. I, I, I did enjoy yeah. the whole show. It was How a fun, did you not enjoy it? Man? It was a fun lead up. It was a fun, you know, the, the, the press tour, the world tour, the, 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 the press conferences, the weigh ins, the fight. It was all fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Floyd, I, I enjoyed watching Floyd Mayweather. Uh, he is one of the best to ever do it. Conor McGregor, obviously, is an icon of our sport. But when it was all said and done, after basically covering boxing for the last month. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I've covered boxing before. I covered Mayweather's last two fights. So I've covered boxing. And I, I really enjoy boxing. I'm super excited to watch Canelo and Triple G. I love boxing. But what I realized over these last month, where it's basically been you and I, for the most part, just talking about this fight. Yeah. Focusing on this fight on the podcast, in my everyday writing, and every day I'm doing, and this sounds stupid and kind of cheesy, but it made me realize how much I love mixed martial arts. Because as Absolutely. much as I enjoyed the boxing side, I missed it. Like, when I thought about it this weekend, like, I was doing a breakdown for UFC.com um, for the card this weekend. Now, the card this weekend in Rotterdam is not a great card. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not a great card. Right, can I tell you how, like, maybe it's it's such – it's so evident that that's true – that if you go on the UFC Fight Pass app that I have, like, you know, if I want to go yeah. watch any fights because I'm a sus uh, subscriber, <laughs> you go on there and you go to the Volkov Struve. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, there's ex exclusive Fight Pass prelims. Oh, those sound fun. Let me just, oh, the fight card is currently unavailable. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, let me just see who's on the main card. Oh, the fight card is currently unavailable. <laughs> and we are four days Three hours, 59 minutes, and 54 seconds at the current moment. Yeah. So it's fight. not a great card. But they're not, they don't even want to tell you. <laughs> that's how not great of a card it is. But that being said, like there's a fight on the prelims. This guy, Maribak Tysimov, is fighting Felipe Silva. Maribak Mer Tysimov is a killer. Four knockouts in a row. Nasty knockout artist. Felipe Silva, also a knockout He's artist. He's got to get a t-shirt that says hit him Merrimack style. It's just going to be <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a fun like slugfest. Now, you don't probably know either guy's name. You might know Merrimack Tysimov. He's, he's kind of, you know, he's, he's a bigger name, I guess, in theory. But that's going to be a fun fight. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing Strew back in action. Volkov is an interesting prospect. Like, it's not a great card. But I'm into it because I'm just excited to see some fights. Like next weekend, we got Demetrius Johnson going for the record against Ray Borg. We got Amanda Nunes and Valentina Shevchenko finally going to fight. Um, Gilbert Melendez against Jeremy Stevens, which is going to be a hell of a good fight. That's out of nowhere. I love Gilbert Melendez is coming back. And is there a little beef in that camp? Wasn't there like some no, back and forth between those? Not camps? really. We'll have no. Gilbert on the show next week. So okay. we'll talk All to right. Yeah, let's um, ask him about that. But, uh, but yeah, like I'm just I, like I said, I enjoy boxing. I'm super excited to watch Canelo Triple G. But I just realized over this last month how much I love mixed martial arts. Like how much I missed it. How much I missed like being able. You know, I still watch it. it was like I wasn't watching fights. But it's just like man, I'm just excited to get focused back on what I love the most. And what I love the most is mixed martial arts. Like I'm just I'm that like I'm excited about the card this weekend, even though it's a it's not a good card. I'm just excited to like get back into MMA, like get back into the mixed martial arts. You know, fuck yeah, Damon. I, I agree with you, man. I agree, hundred percent. I like, uh, hey, boxing. You're nice people, but uh, we got to go home. Hey, the the dissension of the Irish. Just to talk about it one more time. All that video of them like getting to the airport, everybody going crazy was some of the most fun video I saw all weekend. Yeah, like that looked like so like. If that's what Conor McGregor brings to a sport, I wish every sport has a Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. I was in. That is so sick, man. People so happy, so just out of their minds to just give money to come to this country and to have the best time ever to watch their athlete win or lose and 
and be, do it together, like as countrymen. You know, it's a cool thing to see. When you when you remember what Dana White used to say about you know certain people becoming superstars because they have a country behind him. You always talked about that with George St. Pierre, right? Because Canada was always behind George St. Pierre. Now Canada is still very much behind George St. Pierre, and I'm sure they're going to be out in full force in November when he fights Michael Bisping. But the Canadian fans, you know, never they were never as chaotic as the Irish. And I loved it. Oh, like, no, much more reserved. Like the sure. Irish fans, like when I was in New York last year for Connor versus Eddie Alvarez, like I just when I got out of the weigh ins, like I'm walking out and I'm walking through just a sea of those tricolored flags of the Irish flag. Just Hell yeah. a, and it wasn't even like it was after the freaking way. And they're like hanging out in front of Madison square garden, like chanting and, 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 and cheering and like going nuts. And I'm just like, this is amazing to see. Like, I loved it. I was like, this is awesome. Like, this is what you want. This is that kind of crowd you want to follow you around. That's what you said. Like, I, I root for the Cincinnati Bengals. I, I'm sorry. I don't know why. <laughs> but, like, I would love to have that kind of, like, just that kind of fever around a team, the way that Connor brings it out of the Irish fans. Like, And that's what makes Connor. I know it's stealing Dana White's thing, but that's why Dana calls him the unicorn. In a lot of ways, he's Which right. Which is kind of weird. Well, yeah, but it's like he is a unique. He is a unique person. But the way that the fans support him is insane. And 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 you know, no one, no one in, no one in sports. I'll go as far as say this: no one in sports today, no one has a fan base like Conor McGregor. I don't care if you're talking about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Yankees. Yankees, Red about, Sox. Uh, wait, are you talking about? You have to talk about like a single player and or, or, or just athlete. No, period. I don't think there is a more passionate fan base for a team or a fighter or a person than people are for Conor McGregor. Right Living now. in Columbus with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Yes. Wow, that's quite the state. I've been to. A, I love Ohio State. Now I'm not saying there's not more fans. No, no, no that's not. I, I understand I'm not what saying there's saying. not more fans. I'm saying, you're saying passion. I'm saying just the just the pure it, passion emotion. Emotion of watching a fight or watching a game, Connor's fans are insane, and I love it. It's about the passion in the pit and the emotion in the ocean. Now, I will say, I've never <laughs> been to a European soccer match, so I can't say for sure that maybe that's not a little bit more insane. But from what I've witnessed, Connor's, I love it though. I'm not saying it like in a bad way. I'm saying World it like, Cup. like, oh my God, though. But like, Connor's fans. It's awesome. It's just awesome. Like, I remember I was at the weigh-in when Connor fought Dustin Poirier. He wasn't in the main event. He was the third fight down from the card. And the Irish fans were insane. Where there's more than 10 or more Irish gathered, this song just mysteriously plays. <laughs> no one knows why. Oh, so I just love it, man. I love it. If you've never been to a Connor McGregor fight, go at some point because you will. the experience is amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, much like this podcast, the experience is amazing. Now, this experience was not amazing. Um, I was really disappointed in some an artist that I followed for a long time, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Now on UFC Fight Pass, I just I find it so weird that Snoop Dogg. Uh, it's like no one has ever told him what's appropriate to send out on social media, and I totally understand that. <laughs> up to this point, which is this is just not one of the best fucking songs ever written. I mean, this is right up there with like Houses of the Holy. Like seriously, Snoop is a Snoop's iconic. Mount Rushmore for sure in rock and roll music, hip hop, whatever you want to say. I mean, Damon, there's a lot of drama right now in the LBC, and it's really tough to be in Snoop lot of drama. There's a whole lot of drama in the UFC. Yeah, there is it's kind of hard right now being Snoop D-O-double-G. Well, is it? Because it sounds like Snoop Dogg zero fucks about anybody's feelings at work, so to speak, because he is doing the commentary with Uriah Faber, and it's going to be real interesting as these guys get together um, tonight as we're recording this but uh as these guys get together to do the commentary for dana white's contender series i mean yeah. he said some pretty nasty stuff and uh, let's just hear it because and i don't let repeat me any and of let it. me forewarn you harsh 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 language if you're not into it and some racial stuff in there as well just be forewarned it's not nice so just i don't want people like blasting this on their stereo and like got kids in the car and like they hear this language, like not to say we don't use language, but you know what I mean. Like this is pretty, this is pretty out there. So don't use this language. Just, just be forewarned. This is pretty bad. Yeah. All right. Fifty and oh, nigga, the motherfucking champ, nigga. Fifty and oh, fuck that motherfucker.
motherfucking punk ass McGregor, you bitch. Fuck him. Motherfucking champ, nigga. Yeah, nigga. That's what you get for coming to a motherfucking gang fight with a butter knife, you bitch ass motherfucker. Fuck you, nigga. Money team, champ, nigga. What a party at, Floyd. Yeah. Talk some shit now. I'm trying to get some chick in the video and ask his wife. 50 and 0, nigga. Hey, McGregor a bad motherfucker, though. I give him his. He got heart. He got heart. So it's, it's quite, and then he like lights up a blunt at the end, which, you know, that's, if I had to have a favorite part, that would be my favorite part. But this, uh, I, and when I say I've been, I've been a fan of Snoop Dogg for a long time, like I'm so serious, like that. Death Row, East Coast, West Coast thing. Loved it. I was just rocking my Death Row Records t-shirt yeah, last week. I'm so into it, but I cannot ride with you, bro. Well, you listen, know, here's I the mean, thing. I'm down 21st Street, Long Beach. I get it. I'm there, but I can't go with you here. I'm all for, like... Obviously, as a member of the press, I'm all for freedom of speech, so I'm not, like, damning his speech. Like, you can say whatever the hell you want. Like, you can do whatever you want. But it, there's just, there's a line that you don't cross when it comes to, like, just straight, like, it's one thing if you are cr critical of fighters. And that's okay. You can be critical of a fighter. You can say that the guy is not the mentally strongest guy. You can say his wrestling sucks. All those things. That's all fair game because that's an assessment of a person's ability. But when you get into just calling them a bitch... Like he called Daniel Cormier that when he when he cried after losing to John Jones. You know what I mean? Like you just you're just insulting the people. But who, Damon, who are, I don't know if you know it's nothing but a G thing though. Apparently, <laughs> but like it's okay to be critical. But then it's another thing. And, and listen, Snoop can say whatever he want, wants about the fighters. That's fine. But then don't call the broadcast. That's what I'm saying. Okay, like, perfect. That's that's what I was hoping you were going to get yeah, to. Like, I, I just can't hear, I, I can't hear that, man. Like, you can't get on there and talk about... Well, first of all, he's, it's not like he's given in-depth analysis to these fights anyway. And there's so many people that are in Hollywood that would... I mean, Freddie Prince Jr. would be a, a great well, addition. But I think it's the... It, if, correct me if I'm wrong. The shock value of having Snoop Dogg on the broadcast, right? That well, Snoop is funny though. Like when he does those videos they release, like when he was breaking down like Daniel Cormier and Anthony Johnson's knockouts and stuff. Right. They're really funny, and he's got some like just, you're just looking for some like every man kind of attitude. Like he doesn't know the moves, and he doesn't know all the submissions, but he's just having fun and calling the fights. And and they're not. It's not the main broadcast. It's called the Snoop Cast. All that kind of stuff. That's all fun, and I enjoy it. And he's funny, and he's a hilarious dude. I'm not. I'm not faulting any of that. Keep at it. Do it. Have fun. But then don't name call and, and insult a guy like Daniel Cormier, a legend. And especially now we're finding out about John Jones. Uh, just calling him that word and then saying it to Connor, who went out there, who was a massive underdog. No one thought he had a chance in hell. And he went 10 rounds, almost 10 rounds, one of the greatest fighters well, of all time. I, I wouldn't even say like the N word, like, you know, you would be offended so much. Like, but by, it's like just the, that. It was, no, 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 no. You know, I'm saying call him bitch. That's what oh, I'm yeah, saying. Bitch. No, I'm okay, saying bitch. Yeah, like, you're calling yeah, gotcha. you, you step into the octagon. You, you've officially, like, not, you're, you're no longer that word. <laughs> And I don't like that word much anyways because it's been used as like a condescending term for females, which I don't dig. But like if you step into a ring or an octagon, I don't care what you do or what you do afterwards. You're not that. Except for Hermes Franca. <laughs> You're not that. And like this dude's like just insulting them for the sake of insulting them. And it's just low. It's just low. And, and and like I said, if he wants to say those things, great. He's not the first, and I'm sure he won't be the last. I'm not offended. I'm not offended like that. I'm not, like, offended like, oh, you should not say bad things about the fighters. Like, listen, I've said this all the time. If you pay $100 for a ticket and you want to boo a fight, a lot of people disagree with me on this, boo the fight. I don't think you should have control of the broadcast and be able to say whatever you want but about if you're people in, like that if you're, and slander somebody. If I don't you're think you in do that. The, if you're in the broadcast, that's the whole point of this. If you're calling the fights, you're expected to call the fights, even if it's a fun, you know, enjoyable, kind of like off-the-cuff kind of thing. Yeah, you can't say somebody's a bitch. And, you can't call yeah, the fighters. But hang on a second. You, you know, here's here's the thing, Damon, is like with uh, with Snoop Dogg, the, the weirdest thing happens. Like, have you ever taken it too far? And obviously, we've never taken it this far. But like, have you ever taken it too far, like where you're doing something and then like in the middle of it, you realize like, oh, shit, I am like the crazy person all of a sudden. Yeah. 
Like I, I've said too much because he, he walks it back. Like because he walks back at the end. It, it, no, he does, and he goes, "Oh, but you know, Connor, Connor's cool. You know, man, he's got, he got heart. heart. He got heart. You know, but like just a second ago, he's like, I'm a killer. Like you know, like I thought we were right there in the heart of it, and yeah. like." Guns were out, man. Yeah, it you know was, what I'm saying? Like th- bad thing. I mean, it, listen how intense it is in the beginning. You can hear it change. The motherfucking chip, nigga. Fifty you no. Know, He's smiling. All right, here it goes. Fuck ass, McGregor, you bitch. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> motherfucking chip, nigga. <laughs> yeah, nigga. That's what you get for coming to a motherfucking gang fight with a butter knife, uh-huh. bitch ass motherfucker. All right, right after the the uh, Lando Lakes comment right there. <laughs> butter knife. <laughs> The, now he changed so takes it to the the butter well gang fight was like okay whoa what where are we right uh, that was okay first of all it was a sporting event because it was like not a gang fight because his dad was there i don't think it's gang um talking about mayweather i'm gonna hit play again and right now you're gonna hear where snoop dogg realizes in my mind anyway that he's taking it too far Fuck you, nigga. Money team, champ, nigga. All right, here, changes. Where the party at, Floyd? Where the party at? <laughs> yeah. Hi, honey. Okay. Also, this may be a great, great point too. I believe that's his wife, and you can't see her face as well as I would like. And the reason I'd like to see it, Mrs. Uh, Snoop Dogg's face, better. Is because I wonder if she's giving him like, are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> the eyes? cringing, like, the we're, cringing look. We're making some easy cream from the UFC right now. What are you doing right now? Calling everybody a bitch on Instagram, like. And then he changes his tune. Either that, or she was giving him eyes about, yeah, yeah, looking for the party. By the way, complimentary to Snoop Dogg. If this is his house, I, I feel like he trumped my party. This is a little disappointing. <laughs> looking at this video. Not some shit, no. I got one more. Hey. Beer. Did somebody say I got one more rib now for you? <laughs> Which is a tremendous way to end that. And then, like I said, at the end, he's smoking. Like he's, it's a two and a half minute video. <laughs> that you know what? This is somebody that's pieced uh, like a bunch of his uh, Instagram videos together. Is what it is. Yeah. But anyways, the point being is he 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 dialed it back at the end. You hate that, like I'm like, and but have you look at his pad? I mean, it looks like a great place to watch the fights, damn. You got to put up a little shit to watch a great place to watch the fights. Uh, but like I said, he can say whatever he wants. I don't have a problem with him stating his opinion or calling people names. That's fine. I mean, you know, the fighters may take offense to that, and and he may not want to run into Daniel Cormier anytime soon. But but you shouldn't be protect protected like all kept away from everybody either. Like you know, you can't. I just feel like you can't go and and be an employee of a place that has. That employs athletes, and then you go shit on the athletes. Well, that would be like you, you that don't would, ever see them. You know? We like, we uh, record we record our podcast in a radio studio at the studio where you work at, right? And I come in, and I do your show every week, and yes. I, you know, I come in and do the show every week, and and I love it and I enjoy it. But that would be like me, you know, on my Instagram account after coming in and this radio station being so good to me. I've been coming on this on this. I'll be coming on your station for the past three years, basically, for me to go on my Instagram account and then just like insult the owner. You know what I mean? Like, this guy, you know, F this mother ever, and he's a bitch, and blah, 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 blah. On my Instagram, even though he's opening the door and allowing me to come in and, you know, go to the studio or using this. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of the way I take it. Like, you're just, you don't shit where you eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like And, like, he's calling the fights. He's having fun. And, he, and he's funny. He, he's, he's not a bad. I don't think, it, like, it's funny stuff. But then when you get to the point where you're just insulting the people who are making up the sport that you've been Your welcomed co-workers. In, you've been welcomed into like they're welcoming you in you know what i mean like they're saying welcome to welcome to our house and then that's that's like someone saying welcome to my house you walk in and be like man this place is a piece of shit you know what i mean like you're just you're just insulting and it, like i didn't it didn't sit well with me when he insulted dc and it doesn't sit well with me the insulted connor and I just don't want to see that on the broadcast anymore. There's other funny people who would call fights who would not be that way, is my point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's beautiful. I think it's well said, perfect. I think everybody feels the same way. I think everybody wants to love Snoop Dogg. I love I love. He's one of the few people that have made it throughout decades without yeah. being corny. I mean, the No Limit stuff was a little questionable. 
Remember when he had to like Master go, P go to the a... tank? Master P saved him yeah. and take him to Louisiana to get him away from Shook Knight. So Shook Knight didn't kill the shit out of him. Like, are you kidding me? Like Shook Knight, like, yo, dog, Master P. Oh, no like, limit records. That's, a, that's a word I haven't heard in a yo, long time. Mystical was on the track with Snoop Dogg. It's like some of the first times yeah. like a lot of people had ever heard Mystical before. Isn't and, like half of No Limit Records in jail now? Dang, like, oh no, dude. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what was that one guy's name? Got killed from uh, No Limit. Well, C murders. C murder. Yeah, yeah, he's in he's, jail. He's in, he's in jail, but somebody else got murdered. And then Mystical just got arrested. Mr. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't want to get into that whole story because that's pretty bad. I want to get into it. So I was, uh, I was at a concert that he did two weeks before that. Really? Yeah, dude. May or may not have smoked with him too. And I didn't think it was going to be that fishy. He turned out to be sketch. Master P. No limit records was huge. not Master P. Mystical. I don't no, I know. Wanna, yeah, to make sure. Mr. Who I'm, yeah, yeah tell But I'm saying about. that whole. I remember dude, because I worked at a record store when that when that was booming. Make him say, oh, oh my god! Do you remember dude. how big that song was, dude? Do you do you remember how big No Limit Records was well, for like the Snoop two Dogg years? Stuff on No Limit was interesting because it was like so far away from all the stuff that he was doing with Dre, and that was on. Yeah. Well, the end of Death Row was kind of weird, like uh, when he did the Dog Father. Yeah. You know, that record was far, oh, man. I mean, the doggy style was far superior. I mean, it was just so crazy, the difference. But Dre didn't have a lot to do with that record. Yeah. So you saw the difference. But, yeah, I mean, the No Limit stuff was, it was just even more weird. We faded into a completely different subject. Are you kidding me? I think we just picked up tons of listeners. (laughs) No Limit records? Oh, I want to give you a little Snoop Dogg No Limit before we leave. You want to tease something for next week? Uh, We're going to talk about uh, UFC... 215, we're going to have uh, Valentina Shevchenko and Gilbert Melendez on the podcast next week to talk about uh, the event coming up from uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, eh? Ooh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Pop the champagne. Oh, some Snoop Dogg. Is this the No Limit? Look how good. Remember how gaudy the album cover was? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Remember they all, like, bling? They all, uh, every album, every No Limit album cover looked the same in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's funny, man. Like, Snoop Dogg's still awesome. Like, I'm sitting there hating on this. It's amazing. Yeah, just don't insult the fighters. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Who are the other big No Limit artists? I'm trying to remember who they were. Uh, Mystical, C Murder. Uh, wasn't was Lil Lil Wayne? Lil no, Wayne? No, no Lil no, Wayne. Was, uh, no, he was with uh, Baby. Are you sure? Yeah, he's always been Cash Money. Maybe oh, I'm getting Cash Money and No Limit mixed up. That's what but that was like New Orleans was on fire. Yeah, you know. And then Master P got that show on Nickelodeon. <laughs> he did with his kid. He had a kid, like a kid's show. And he did the, uh, didn't he do like a uh, summer league pro ball? Well, he was, I believe like almost NBA level player. If I'm not mistaken. All right, here we go. Here we go. Master P silk, the shocker. I silk the F and shocker yeah, is C-Murder, right. Murder, mystical. Yes. TRU. Remember TRU? Yeah. I remember them. Yeah. TRU. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Mr. Servon, remember Mr. Servon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, the no limit thing blew up, and he was lucky to get Snoop Dogg. They were huge. But then, you know, when Dre released that record, the Chronic, the second Chronic, yeah. what was it called? 90 or 2000 Chronic 2000 or whatever, yeah. 2001. That's when he came back. Mia X was the other one. Mia. Now we're going deep. <laughs> Cain right. and Abel. Yeah, we're, we've, we've fallen. We've gone completely off the rails now. I'm I'm falling down a rabbit hole thinking about No Limit Records. Shout out to Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> All right, you guys have an awesome week, man. We'll be back next week. It's Fight Society. Follow Damon Martin at Damon Martin and myself at Jeremy Loper.